over the last two days, we've talked about a powerful prophetic word from the Lord through Brother Copeland. Today, I want to share with you a word from the Lord that He gave to me to give to you. Ooh, I'm excited. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. I'm Pastor George Pearsons. This is my wife. Terry Copeland Pearsons. And we are so glad to be here with we you. Are. And I want to say something before we get into our word today. I'd like to say thank you to Kenneth and Gloria Copeland for allowing us to be on this broadcast, their broadcast that began in 19... The daily broadcast began in 1989. Okay. Weekly. 1979. 1979. And there. you were there. I was there. <laughs> you were there. I was there. <laughs> but on the other side of the camera, but I was there. In fact, when we started, it was in this very spot right here in this this very studio. And so we know how precious this program, yes. uh, but even more so how precious the partners and the viewers are right. to Brother and Sister Copeland and to all of us here at KCM. So it's a great privilege. It's an honor and a huge responsibility to be in front of this camera to bring the Word of God to you. And most of all, we are, we are accountable to the Lord to see to it that what we say to you is in line with the mission that we have been assigned here right. at Kenneth Copeland right. Ministries to teach people who they are in Christ Jesus and their biblical rights and privileges that belong to them. And so I hope that we have accomplished that in these last two weeks. And of course, we'd love to hear from you since we're not on all the time. It'd be great for you to email us there at, and give us some feedback and response. We would appreciate it. And you know, I don't know, drop my dad a line and tell him the kid done good. <laughs> <laughs> and they can also watch us since we're senior pastors of That's Eagle right. Mountain Eagle International Mountain. Church. EMIC. You can watch us uh, on Sundays. Sunday mornings. Uh, 10 o'clock Central Time, mm -hmm. uh, Wednesday nights, 7 Central Time. And then EMIC.org, Roku. We're so grateful to be able to be, be doing this. And I just wanted to let you know that we've been talking about these last two weeks what to do in troubled economic times that we, we don't have to be subject to the times. If we line up with God's Word and if we do what He tells us to do, then He will guide us through it and we will end up thriving and not just surviving, not just getting by. And we began two weeks ago with this statement, and this is from the news, the supply chain bottlenecks around the world have caused record shortages of many products that American consumers are used to having readily available. That includes food, household goods, electronics, automobiles, supplies of every kind, including baby formula. Prices are also increasing on goods and services, including gas at the pump. Experts have warned that problems will likely, likely get worse before they get better. But we have been taught and trained how to take our authority over our own household and live our lives prosperously, not lacking in any area at all, but knowing that our God is our source and He will supply every need that we have according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's the important part to remember. <laughs> yep. It's by Christ Jesus. That's why being a believer in Jesus, confessing Him as Lord, going to the Word, that's where that's where the connection is. That's the plug-in. When we're plugged into Him, then His supply flows through it. So as we mentioned at the top of the program today, which, by the way, all of these outlines are available for the last two weeks. You can go to kcm.org, click onto the picture of Pastor Terry and myself, and it will take you to these outlines and so many other outlines as well so that you can build your library, pastors and ministers. You can teach from this and, and add to your to these notes, the revelation that God gives you about these particular topics. I, I want to say something to pastors. Mm -hmm. You know, too many times we hear people that have maybe heard Pastor George uh, speak on something along these lines and say, man, my pastor's not addressing this at all. Pastors, come on, you, you hold the answer, you hold the key. And if you don't know where to go or you're afraid, 
then I encourage you to get these outlines or, or something because victory is, this is the victory that overcomes the world, right. even right. our faith. And Paul said, this is the word that we preach, the word of faith. <clears throat> That's You're right. responsible and accountable for those, those sheep that you, you guide them and you lead yes. them in the way that they should go, which is in the way of the Lord. So, so if somebody needs to hear that, come on now, we've got to give the answers that people need in this hour because Jesus is the answer. You know, talking about pastoring, and, and that's what we do every Sunday. That's what we prepare for, and we have our services together. And I always pray on Saturdays before our service on Sunday. And I ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want to say? What do you want to do? What do you want to say to these precious people that you've given to us to pastor and to minister to? Not just the people that are there in the building, but those that are watching. We, have, we probably have e-members that are watching us right now on this broadcast. But that is a practice that I've had for years and years that I ask the Lord, what do you want to do? What do you want to say? And I was praying over the current economic situation on a Saturday. And the Lord spoke a very distinct and clear word to me. And he said this, I take care of my own. I take care of my own. And I said, Lord, is that what you want me to talk about tomorrow? He said, yes, I want you to tell the congregation that. So I want to give you the scriptures that the Lord gave to me and the thoughts that he put down in my heart about the fact that He takes care of us. He is a good, loving Father who takes care of His children. Psalm 37, verses 18 and 19. This is the New Living Translation. Day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent. In the, New King, in the King James Version, it says the righteous. And they will receive an inheritance that lasts forever. They will not be disgraced in hard times. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. Terry, we experienced that here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. We have. Over Miraculous. the last two years? Miraculous. Oh, my goodness. It's really been something that you would think during a time of pandemic and everything else that's been going on, that, that one would go backwards, or we've seen businesses. We've seen businesses that we've seen around for a long time yeah. go out of business. Disappear. I was reading just the other day, and I meant to tell you this, that, that the last Howard Johnson's closed. Oh, my. <laughs> that was... What a holdout. For, for those of us who grew up in the 50s and the 60s, Howard Johnson's was the place that you stop on the way to wherever you're going. There wasn't hardly anything else. And to see that, it's like, wow, that's, that's a sign of the times that we are in, that things that have been around for a long time have been shutting down because they couldn't make it. They couldn't make it. You talk about the, how the ministry, and we've been so blessed. Why is that important? Because actually, when God supplies through His people to a ministry such as ours and others in mm -hmm. the church, then that ministry, it, are, they are in position to bring back the supply, not only to those who sowed yes. into it, yes. but to many, many more. <laughs> and you get that word to enough people, it begins to change the circumstances, shifts the atmosphere, changes the outcome for others that don't know or that haven't heard. So this is actually, as He blesses us, it blesses you blesses others. It should be that way in your life, that as He blesses you, prospers you, it's so that you can then uh, distribute not only your goods and services, right. but distribute the revelation knowledge that right. God has given you about Himself. I just want to pray right now yeah, for those good. who may have had businesses and they were shut down, or you worked for a company that had to shut down, the Lord is telling you right now, I take, I take, take care, care of my you. own. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Thank Jesus, you, I pray over everyone that has experienced mm -hmm. some kind of shutdown because of the pandemic. It has affected their business. It has affected their lives. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Just like Job, they are coming back better and stronger than ever before. The devil attacked, 
But Father, I thank you that you are the God of restoration. And you're not only restoring what the canker worm had stolen, you are multiplying it. And they're coming out better because of it. In Jesus', Jesus. name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Isaiah 46, verse 4, this is the Good News translation. I am your God, and I will take care of you until you are old and your hair is gray. I made you, and I will care for you. I will give you help, and I will rescue you. Praise God. These wonderful scriptures about how much the Father will take care of us. Look at that last chapter of Job, Terry. Would you look that up for me? I, I want people to see. We think about Job and, and they talk about um, poor as Job, but Job did not end up poor. No, it was, he, this, it was this, not less than a year, Bible scholars Less say. than a year, yep. Less than a year, it was a tough year. It was a, it was a 2020, <laughs> you yeah, know? It was a 2020. He experienced a yes. 2020. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and do you have that handy there to read? How, how Verse he, 10, the Lord turned the captivity of Job, yes. restored his fortunes, yes. and he, when he prayed for his friends, he got himself off his mind. So mm -hmm. that actually could have turned a lot sooner. Yes. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. <laughs> Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters, all who had known him before. They ate bread with him in his house. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And it goes on to tell other things. Uh, the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. Yes. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 <laughs> oh, yoke of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys, seven sons, three daughters. Uh, and it says, in all the land, there was no women so fair as the daughters of jo Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. He had to have so much that he not only prospered That's his right. sons, but it prospered yes. his daughters, yes. which <clears throat> kind of went across the culture of that day. So, wow. Yeah. He, it, what, so, you know, in <clears throat> all of that that he went through, that tells me, George, yeah. it changed him. Yes, it did. When he prayed for his yes, friends, it, did. it didn't just change mm -hmm. his circumstances. He prayed for his friends. He got himself off of his mind. Right. He got out of fear right. over his family. And through that, he became so generous. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to give and give and keep giving. And look what it did for him. Yeah. And he ministered to all those around him. Changed the whole, <laughs> changed the complexion of the whole countryside. I know this would be strange to say this, but, but you know, if people were affected by that in 2020, they can just start saying, I'm just like Job. Yeah, it would shock a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, really. Like, just like Job. Just what? Like Are you Job. kidding me? Yeah. No, look how he turned out. That's right. Yep. A and very... the Bible tells very clearly how he, why he wind up in the situation he was in. Yes. That which he greatly feared came upon him. That's why we spent two weeks telling you, don't fear, have faith, stay right. in faith, feed right. your faith. Don't feed your fear, feed your faith. And and then you'll buy, buy um, skirt a lot of those Problems. Yes, or go around them. Psalm 121, 5 through 8, New Living Translation. We're talking about the fact that God takes care of His own. The Lord Himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon at night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and you go, both now I know what you're doing. You're thinking of that song, The Goodness of God. Yeah. All my life, yeah. you have been faithful. Yeah. All my life, you've been so, so good to me. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness <clears throat> of God. Both now and forever. forever. That's eternity. He cares for us now. And He cares for us for eternity. And to think about how faithful and how good He is will help you get through whatever you're going through right now. Because whatever you're going through now, He's been faithful all the way through. And He will continue. The Lord takes care of us in spite of the economy. Or any or, other... Yeah. Any other part of the world system, there's the economy, the, the health system, 
which I remember my friend telling me, uh, Gina Linus said many years ago, she said, I don't know, it just seems, a, this was like 20 years ago. She said, it seems to me that regardless of health care that could help people, that it's mm. going to be where you can't get it. Well, look yeah, at that. Look, look at, at the health care system. At look at, and then in many ways, our health care system that's promoting good things is actually dangerous. There are right. many cases, right. as many people being right. made sick by the health care. I take care of my own. I prosper. I prosper my own. I heal my own. Yeah. I restore my own. Everything that I have belongs to my own. So we receive that. We take it. We, we lay hold and accept what he has done. As I was studying this, Terry, I was, I was thinking about um, th the second part of this, and that was that he takes care of us as a father. Takes care of and watches over children. A good father. We belong to him. We are his. And just like <clears throat> Jeremy and Aubrey, they belong to us. We raised them. You birthed them. <laughs> <laughs> I stood there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. And, and we cared for them all the way through to the place to where now they're grown. And we still care for and them. And we still care for them. And their children. And their, and their children. Psalm 103. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us. We belong to Him. We are His people. We are His flock. Psalm 73, 23. Yet I still belong to you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious Destiny. That was David speaking. Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. Do not be afraid, for I've ransomed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. When you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Maybe you should read the next one. <laughs> the message translation, don't be afraid, I've redeemed you. I've called you, I've called your name. Think about who's saying this. Oh, yes. The King of the universe, the yes. Almighty God, the Creator the provider, yeah. the, the, the source of light, the source of life, the source yeah. of everything good. And he says, George. He, he, yeah. George, he said it. Terry. Yeah. It reminds me of the, the times that I've been with Oral Roberts. And Terry, you know that I used to go up there with Brother Copeland for the board meetings that they had. And you know, Oral Roberts, what a personality. What a huge personality. <laughs> And there were a couple of times that I was up there for the board meetings and I wondered to my, they said, Oral Roberts is coming to the board meeting. This is after he'd retired. He's coming to the board meeting. Everybody was so excited. And I thought to myself, will he even remember me? And I remember him in the boardroom, walking through the door, coming down the steps, opened his arms to mm -hmm. me. He said, George. Now, that was Oral Roberts. <laughs> Think about God. Think about Him opening His arms to you. I, I want to say this. Mm. Drop every ill-conceived idea <clears throat> of fatherhood that you've ever had. Mm. Whether you didn't have a father, a bad father, or maybe one you're, you were hard on. They're, they're human fathers that have um, short, shortcomings. Whatever, whatever a measure of failure there was in fatherhood where you're concerned, some don't even know who their father was. 
but God. <clears throat> not only is He your Father, He's not a deadbeat Father, and it's His desire yeah. to reveal Himself to you as your Father. That's what Jesus is all about. Yeah. He said, I came to reveal the Father. Not God, that comes too, but I came to reveal the Father. And the Holy Spirit is sent to reveal Jesus revealing the Father. Drop everything yeah. from this point forward that in any way is a shortfall of fatherhood. Don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called your name. You're mine. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're being between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end because I am God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Savior. I paid a huge price for you. In Psalm 94, 14, the Lord will not abandon His people. He will not desert those who belong to Him. And then I did this in church. And this is kind of, a, this is a word from the Lord, but it's a letter. Are you, are you going to make it through this? I think. My dear sons and daughters, that's how he put it to me, my dear sons and daughters. So he's speaking to you. It's a letter that he wrote to you. During these times, I'm going to take care of you. If you believe me for the miraculous, I will provide for you what is lacking for others. I will fill your home, your business, your ministry, your wallet, your purse, your bank account, your car, and everything else that needs to be filled. I am the filler. I'm not impoverished, nor do I have a limited supply of what is needed in the earth. Supplies are not limited in my kingdom. I have it all, and I want to get it to you. I have more than enough. I will locate it in the earth, and I will get it to you. Don't accept it when they say, I'm sorry, we're out of what you need. No, just use your faith and align your mouth with my ability to do for you what is needed in this natural time of lack. And don't worry what, when the costs rise. I will make sure that you have more than enough to pay for whatever you need to fulfill my vision for your life. I am your supernatural supply chain. I am the God written about in Isaiah 45, 3. That says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches in secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. I will give you concealed treasures. I will reveal to you my hidden stockpiles. I will take care of anyone and everyone who calls upon my name and exercises their faith for the impossible. My people do not lack in times of lack. Just look at Isaac. He reaped the hundredfold return in the time of famine in Genesis 26. Yes, I will supply your every need, but you know me. I'll give you more than what you need. I'll give you so much that you'll have plenty left over to help others. I take care of my own. You are mine and I am yours. And it's signed. You're loving. Heavenly. <sighs> Father, thank you, Jesus. Prepare for your future in life and in ministry at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Apply yourself practically to ministry through class electives designed to develop your gifts. Get equipped for your calling, enter into your mission field confidently, and teach others to do the same. Graduate as an available voice to carry the legacy of faith into your life and ministry. To find out more, go to kcbiblecollege.org. Apply today. Not one day goes by that we don't think about and pray over the partners and the supporters of this ministry. Partners you are prayed over every day. We have people all over this campus praying for you. Pastor Terry has seen to it that we have prayer everywhere. And we appreciate you so much. 
and I know how much Kenneth and Gloria appreciate you. I mean, he has a television screen in his office at home with partner pictures going by, and he'll just, he'll just stand up there and lay his hands on it and pray over the partners. The Apostle Paul had wonderful partners, and that's why we, we preach so much from the book of Philippians um, where partnership is concerned because th these, these are the kinds of partners that we have. And the, uh, the Apostle Paul said that, and this is because of the giving of their partners. He said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And I never really thought about it until this moment that he's saying that because of the support of his partners. They're the ones that are helping him, speaking encouraging words over him, and sowing into his ministry. Listen, in verse 14, notwithstanding, you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. They gave. Verse 15, now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Faithful. Faithful partners. There are partners who had to leave Ukraine who are still giving to the Ukrainian office. That's partnership. Mm -hmm. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity. But listen to what he said, and this is the heart of Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. He said, I have all. I abound, I am full, and I have received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent to me, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so, thank you. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for your support. And our desire is that fruit would abound to your account. Everything that is done at Kenneth Copeland Ministries to the partners of this ministry, you get credit for because you took part in what we've done. Father, we pray over this offering and thank you in Jesus' name for everyone who is giving today to the work of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Terry. The information for your offering is right there on the screen, and we do appreciate it and believe for your multiplied return. As you give, it goes through so many different channels in so many ways around the world. We also want to remind you that we have a, a prayer team at the end of that phone number that's on your screen that you can call anytime, and we want to be a blessing to you. It's been our privilege to be with you these past two weeks. We'd love to hear from you. Until then, remember that this is Pastor George and Pastor Terry loving you, thanking you and blessing you and reminding you that God, Jesus, oh, <laughs> that God, God loves, loves you, you we, we love, love you, and, and Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Thank you for sowing into Kenneth Copeland Ministries. To give by text, text the letters KCM to 36609. 